How to create a melting snow text effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Inside your project's edits window, go to effects. Underneath toolbox, select effects. And go to drag a fusion composition effect filter to your edits timeline. Select this new clip, holding control or command if you're a Mac user and press D to change the clip duration if you wish. Right click on your fusion composition clip and go to open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion Nodes panel, go to add a text node to your Fusion Composition clip by selecting the relevant icon from the menu above the nodes grid. With this new text node selected, select either the left or right view options underneath this node to see a preview of the text that you will create above your Fusion timeline. Under Inspector and Text, type in the text that you wish to have appear on your melting snow animation Select your desired font. In this particular example, I will select Viner Hand ITC, set as regular. Keep the text color set to white and adjust the size as you wish. Deselect your text node by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid. Hold and shift and press space. Use the search box at the bottom of the new select tool window which appears to find the P emitter tool. Select this and go to click on add. We will use this new node to create the melting text effect. With this new tool selected, return to Inspector and underneath Controls, increase number to 300. Adding a high number of particles will reduce the amount of gaps that appear in your text body. To vary the number of particles which generate randomly at any instance, we will also increment the value for number variance. Here in this case, I will do it to 20. To ensure that the melting text particles don't drift too far away from your text, we need to lower the lifespan value. Here in this example, I will decrease this from 100 to 30. I will increment the value for lifespan variance also. Here in this example, I will increase this to 10, which will help generate the wavy icicle effect on the melting text. Double click on velocity. To have the particles move, increment the value for velocity slightly. Here in this example, I will increase this to 0.002. Since I don't wish for the melting text particles to float too far away from the original text itself. To ensure that the melting particles go downwards, I will change angle from 0 to 270. To generate the appearance of the particles themselves, I will select Style. And will change Style from Point to Blob. And to ensure that these particles are big enough to colour the whole text that I've created, I will double click on size controls and will increment size from 0.1 to 1.0. Double click on fade controls. To have the particles fade in as they are generated, I will increment the fade in value here to 0.1 so that the particles fade in in the first 10% of their lifespan. And to ensure that the particles don't disappear abruptly, I will have them fade out in the final 10% of their lifespan by decreasing the out value here to 0.9. To ensure that we can use the text itself as the origin where the particles emit from, I must go to Region. And here I will change Region from Sphere to Bitmap. You should now see a yellow arrow appearing alongside your P emitter node. Click on the grey box next to Text 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow arrow to make a connection so that the particles will now spawn from the text that you have written. To ensure that DaVinci Resolve can process this new particle effect, with P emitter 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a P render tool. With P render 1 still selected, go to inspector and ensure that output mode is set to 2D. Deselect P render 1, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a merge tool. Connect P Render 1 to the green arrow alongside Merge 1 so that these melting snow particles will appear in front of your original text. As we create the melting snow effect, we need to ensure that a copy of the original text remains behind this. Go to Select Text 1, holding Ctrl and press C to copy. Deselect Text 1, holding Ctrl and press V to paste. To reduce the amount of melting movement effect on the top of your text, which could spoil the snow melting illusion, which naturally involves melting ice flowing downwards. We need to shift the copy of this text upwards slightly 
so that the top side of our text remains static. Under Inspector, go to Layout and increase Centre Y to 0 0.502. With a copy of your text node still selected, hold in Shift and press Space and go to add a Blur tool. With this new node selected, under Inspector and Controls, set Blur Size to 2.4. The fast Gaussian blur effect applied to our text will add a gentle blur to the text outlines. What we can now do to solidify this spread out colour shade and to give the text more body, with Blur 1 still selected, hold in Shift and press Space and go to add a Sharpen tool. Under Inspector for this new tool, increase Amount to 7.1, which should add hardness to the spread blurred effect which appears around our original text. Connect this Sharpen tool to the yellow background arrow of Merge 1, so that the outline of your text appears behind the melting snow effect particles that we previously created. To add a gentle glow effect to your text, select Merge 1, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add a Soft Glow tool. With this new tool selected, under Inspector, increase Threshold to 0 0.5 and decrease Gain to 1. The increase of the Threshold value will make the lighter snow shade stand out from the melting water colour shade that we will add later on in this tutorial. To ensure that the white snow particles aren't too vibrant, the Gain value has been decreased slightly here. Select all of your nodes apart from Media Out 1 which you can also do by holding in control and selecting them individually. Hold in control and press G to group. With this group node selected, press F2. And I will rename this text in capitals so that I know what this grouped set of nodes refers to in my animation effect. Now to add the folding snow droplets and the melting light blue shade animated effect. Deselect your text group. Hold in shift and press space and go to add a second merge tool. Connect your text group to the green foreground arrow of merge 2 so that the text effect appears in front of the dropping snow particles. Double click on your text group to open this. Select your first text node. Hold in control and press C to copy. Click on the cross at the top left corner to close this group. Deselect your text group. Hold in control and press V to paste. This duplicated text node is necessary as we wish for the snow particles to drop from the text itself. Hence why we need another copy of this. Deselect your nodes. Go to add an ellipse tool from the nodes menu. With this new tool selected and set in preview. Go to inspector and reduce both the height and width to 0.005. Return to your nodes panel. Deselect ellipse 1. Go to add a second P emitter node. With this new tool selected, return to Inspector and underneath Controls, increasing the value for number will increase the number of snow droplets that appear on your animation. Here in this example, I wish to reduce this so that there aren't too many and the text is still easy to read. I will reduce the value from 10 to 1.5. To ensure that the falling snow particles reach the bottom of the screen, I will keep lifespan set to 100. Open the Velocity section, increase Velocity to 0.05 and to have the snow particles falling down at various speeds, increment Velocity variance slightly to 0.025. To ensure that the snow particles fall downwards also, set Angle to 270. And to ensure that we can use our newly created ellipse shape for our snow particles, go to Style and change Style from Point to bitmap. You can now connect ellipse 1 to a yellow arrow alongside P emitter 2. And to ensure that these ellipse shapes fall from the position of our copied text, with P emitter 2 still selected, under Inspector go to Region, change Region from Sphere to bitmap, enabling you to connect your duplicated text node to a new green arrow alongside P emitter 2 which will set the text as the falling snow particle origin. With PMeter 2 still selected, return to Inspector, click back on Style, double click on Size Controls, increase the size of the particles to 0.5, and to have the snow droplets vary in size as they fall from the text, 
increment size variance slightly to 0.15. With P-Emitter 2 still selected, hold in Shift and press space. And go to add a P-Render tool. Again, like with the initial P-Render tool, under Inspector, ensure that the output mode is set to 2D for particle processing purposes. With P-Render 2 still selected, hold in Shift and press space once again. And go to add a Gaussian Blur tool which we will use to add a gentle blur to the outline of the falling snow particles. With this tool selected, under Inspector and Controls, reduce Strength to 0.1. With Gaussian Blur still selected, hold in Shift and press Space once again. And go to add Soft Glow. And to reduce the glow spread slightly from the outline of your snow particles, decrease Gain to 1. Reduce Glow Size to 5.5. Select the six nodes that make up your falling snow particles from your duplicated text node to soft glow. Hold in control and press G to group and press F2 to rename this as snow. Connect this snow group to the yellow arrow of merge two. Deselect your nodes. Select merge two. Hold in shift and press space and go to add a third merge tool. Deselect this new merge tool, hold in shift and press space, and go to add fast noise. We will use this new tool to add an animated light blue melting shade effect to our white snow text. With this new tool selected, under inspector and noise, to have both the white and blue shade stand out significantly, increase detail to 10, and to increase the number of different color sections on your text, Increase scale to 20. And to add a gentle animation effect to this fast noise, increase seeth rate to 0.1. Select color. Click on gradient. Ensure that the node on the left side of the gradient bar is selected, which by default should present the color black. Double click on this box underneath the gradient bar. And go to add a sky blue shade using the HTML code hash 81E. 4FF. Click OK and ensure that you have a second node on the far right side of your gradient bar set at position 1.0 with the color white. To ensure that this new animated gradient appears in front of your text, connect Fast Noise 1 to the green foreground arrow of Merge 3. Connect Merge 3 to Media Out 1. Select left or right view underneath Media Out 1. Select Merge 3. Under Inspector and Merge, change Apply Mode from Normal to Darken. Should you want the black shade around your animated text to be transparent, with Merge 3 selected, hold in Shift and press Space again. And go to add Delta Keyer. With this new tool selected, under Inspector and Key, click on the Picker tool alongside the grey box next to Reference. Hold your mouse button down and drag your cursor to the black shade appearing around your text on the preview window. Let go once your cursor is over this, so that the black shade is selected for reference, which will now enable image and video files on lower video tracks in your edits window to be made visible behind your text. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.